In this video, I'm going to show you an example of solving a second order differential equation with the power series method. The given differential equation is y double prime plus y equal zero. This is a relatively simple second order differential equation. And probably you know what is the solution of this differential equation. Why the solution of this differential equation is C1 cosine x plus C2 sine x. But here we want to find the solution of this differential equation with the power series method. So let us start. First, we suppose the solution of this differential equation, y we suppose to be the solution of this differential equation, and we suppose y to be equal to this power series, sigma n from 0 to infinity, a n x to the n. Now from this we have to find y double prime, because we need y double prime. y prime, the first derivative is sigma, we have to take derivative of this general term. Derivative of x to the n is n x to the n minus 1. And we have to multiply it by the coefficient a n. So derivative of this term is n a n x to the n minus 1. And you have to start n from 1 to infinity. When you take derivative of this power series, because the first term of this power series is a constant, when we take derivative of that term, derivative of that term is 0, so we have to start in y prime n from 1. Now from this, if we take another derivative to find y double prime, y double prime is equal to sigma n from 2 to infinity. And derivative of this term is n times n minus 1 a n x to the n minus 2. If you take derivative of this term with power rule, you can get this answer simply. Now we have to plug in this for y, prime, y double prime here and this for y here. Then we have sigma n from 2 to infinity n times n minus 1 a n x to the power of n minus 2 plus sigma n from 0 to infinity a n x to the n is equal 0. Now at this step, we have to try to make the power of x the same at the two power series. Note that here the power of x is n minus 2, but here the power of x is n. And I want to make the power of x here the same as the power of x in the second power series. To make the power of x here the same as the power of x here, we have to replace n in this term, every n in this term, with n plus 2. Why this help us to change this power to n because if we replace n here with n plus 2 then n plus 2 minus 2 minus these two here n plus 2 minus 2 is n so to make the power of x the same in the two power series we change n here every n here to n plus 2 but we have to change the starting point of the power series because we increase two unit to n we add two to the n we have to do the inverse of this operation because we add two so for the starting point we have to subtract two units at the same time we subtract two units from the starting point and by doing this, the starting point becomes 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. This technique is the shifting of the index of summation. And if you are not familiar with this, which is very important in solving differential equations with the power series method, you can watch my video in this regard. In this technique, whatever we are doing here with n, 
we are doing the opposite of that operation with the starting point of the power series here we add two unit to the n we replace n with n plus two so we subtract two units from the starting point now if we do this we get to this power series n starts from zero to infinity we replace every n here with n plus two so we have n plus two times by n plus two we replace this n with n plus two but minus one n plus two minus one is n plus one a sub n plus two x to the power of n plus two minus two which is n and we write the second power series now in this sigma and in this sigma the power of x is the same so we can factor x to the n also note that the starting point is also the same so we can put only one sigma here sigma n from 0 to infinity and we factor x to the n from this term we have n plus 2 times n plus 1 a sub n plus 2 and from this term we have only a sub n and this should be equal to 0 now because this sigma for every x is always equal to 0 we have to set the coefficient of x to the n which is this bracket equal to zero and from that we can find a recurrence relation for a n's which help us to find a n's n plus two times n plus one a n plus two plus a n equal zero now if we solve this recurrence relation for a sub n plus 2 we get to this relation a sub n plus 2 equals we move this to the right and we divide it by the coefficient of a n plus 2 which we have here so we have this relation negative a n over n plus 2 times n plus 1 now that we have the recurrence relation we have to use this recurrence relation for finding a n's and we have to start from 0 because in the sigma n starts from 0 if we plug in 0 in this recurrence relation then we have a2 equals negative a0 note that we plug in 0 for every n in this recurrence relation 0 plus 2 is 2 0 plus 1 is 1 2 times 1 is 2 so a2 equals negative a0 over 2 if we plug in 1 for n in this recurrence relation we have a3 equals negative a1 over 1 plus 3 1 plus 2 is 3 1 plus 1 is 2 so 3 times 2 we have 3 times 2 let's keep this in this form do not multiply 3 by 2 here it's better to keep it in this form now if we plug in 2 in this relation a4 equals negative a2 over 2 plus 2 is 4 2 plus 1 is 3 so we have 4 times 3 but note that a2 here is negative a0 over 2 and so if we replace a2 here with negative a0 over 2 we have negative negative a0 over 2 all over 4 times 3 
Negative times negative becomes positive and a0 over 2 over 4 times 3 is a0 over 4 times 3 times 2. And then if we plug in 3 for n, we have a5 equals negative a3 over 3 plus 2 is 5, 3 plus 1 is 4, so we have 5 times 4. But note that a3 is negative a1 over 3 times 2. So we can write this as negative negative a1 over 3 times 2 all over 5 times 4. Negative times negative becomes positive and we have a1 over 5 times 4 times 3 times Two. Now if you look at these a2, a3, a4, a5, we can see a pattern. First of all, note that a2 and a4, and simply you can check that a6, all of the coefficients for even terms, a2, a4, a6, and so on, are dependent to a0. But odd terms, the coefficients with odd subscript are dependent to a1. Look at here, a3 is negative a1 over 3 times 2. a5 is a1 over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. All odd coefficients are in terms of a1, but even coefficients are in terms of a0. And if you attention, we can write this as negative a0 over 2 factorial. We can write this as negative a1 over 3 factorial. We can write this as a0 over 4 factorial. And this one as a1 over 5 factorial. Now if we generalize this for every coefficient with even subscript and odd subscript we have a2n like this one and this one a2n is always equal to note that when we have 2 here we have 2 factor when we have 4 here we have 4 factor so when we have 2n in general we expect to have 2n factorial in denominator. a0 is always here. But note that when we have a2, here is negative. In a4, here is positive. Simply, you can check that in a6, here is negative. How we can write this in general as a formula? When you have positive negative in your term, you can simply put a negative 1 to some power here but what is the appropriate power the power that you have he put here in this case is n let's see why this works for example when we have a2 it means that 2n is 2 and if 2n is 2 it means that n is 1 and if n here is 1 negative 1 to the 1 is negative which we want to be negative but for example for a4 we want to here be positive if 2n equals 4 then n is 2 and if we plug in 2 here negative 1 to the 2 is positive so this is the general formula for the even coefficients but for odd coefficients, similarly, we can write the formula in this form. Negative 1 to the n, a1 here, because all odd coefficients are in terms of a1. And we have to put this negative 1 to the n because some of them are positive, some of them are negative. And in denominator, we have 2n plus 1 factorial. Now here, if we finally replace these 
a ends here in the power series solution we get to this relation y equals to sigma n from 0 to infinity this part is for even coefficients and the next sigma is for odd coefficients plus sigma n from 0 to infinity because we have two separate relations one for odd degrees and one for even degrees this coefficient is for even degrees so we have negative 1 to the n a0 over 2n factorial and note that because this is coefficient for even degrees you have to put x to the 2n here and because this is for odd degrees we have negative 1 to the n a1 over 2n plus 1 factorial x to the power of 2n plus 1. And this is the power series solution for the given differential equation. If you want, you can bring a0 out of the sigma and also a1 here. If we do so, we can write this as a0 sigma n from 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n over 2n factorial x to the 2n plus a1 sigma n from 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 factorial x to the power of 2n plus 1. Now if you are familiar with the Maclaurin series of functions probably you know that this power series sigma n from 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n over 2n factorial x to the 2n is cosine x and the other power series that here we have is sine x and a0 and a1 play the role of these two coefficient here as you can see with the power series method we get to the same answer that we had here and this completes the solution of this differential equation with the power series method if you like this video and you want to learn more about solving differential equations with power series and other methods please subscribe in my channel and thank you for watching